panel discussion is titled, the next uh, panel is titled, The Sky is the Limit or What? And I've been told that this is about the genre of science fiction. Right? Is that right? Am I correct? Okay. And for this particular discussion, I would like to first of all invite our panelists on the stage, Ayan Kapadia, Devisha Malhotra, and Kahan Keyor Patel Badotria. That is a mouthful. Can I have all the panelists on the stage first? And I would also like to take a moment to introduce all of them to you. So Devisha is the author of A Trail of Tales. Her profile says that she is a born entertainer and she is an avid supporter of underrated artists. She loves reading books, writing poetry and songs as well as listening to music. Welcome onto the stage. Then I would like to welcome Ayan, who has always been a book lover. He's a passionate writer and shares his birthday with the great playwright Sir William Shakespeare. How wonderful! Uh, what started as an assignment for his school ended up becoming Ayan's first published book, Maverick's Encounter with the Pirates, and he has won several awards and accolades for it. Welcome, Ayan. And last but not the least, I would like to invite on stage. Kahan, your name is pronounced as Kahan or Kahan? Kahan. Kahan. And what does your name mean? Um, it, it's another name for Lord Krishna. It's another name for Lord Krishna. And you are the writer of The Rising Flames? No. no. I'm the author of Firestorm. Okay. So I have a wrong profile with me, so I will apologize. Kahan is here. He's a young writer in front of us who I'm sure dabbles in the genre of fantasy fiction and science fiction and a young prodigious writer he is at that. I would also like to invite on stage now the moderator for the panel, Aditya Nath. Aditya, can we now have you on the stage? Uh, is the founder of Quizcraft Global that has conducted over 4,000 knowledge shows across the world. <laughs> he is one of India's top quiz masters and has, has headed research for Kaun Panika Karodpati and Mastermind India. We welcome you on stage, giving all the panel to you now. Thank you very much. Uh, Good morning everyone, it's uh, still a little cloudy and foggy outside but uh, I see like the sun is already out inside here and I have three stars with me so I'm warm, I bought a jacket and a cap and gloves on my way here. I, I'm not born here but I've lived most of my life in Delhi so I should ideally be used to the Delhi winter. Uh, it's not, every winter is like the first time you're on stage, it, you start freezing all over again. But right now, I've ditched all that stuff because of the warmth that's enveloped me as soon as I walked in here. Uh, thank you so much for all three of you for joining us on stage. Thank you, everyone. Uh, I'm saying all the thank yous before because I don't really know. Uh, we'll be trailing off into questions at the end of the thing, so I may not have time to thank everyone then. And I'm so, so happy to see kids in uniforms flanking, you know, and right at the back there. So, welcome to the school students who are here for this session. I'm sure that you will appreciate the efforts that uh, these kids have put into writing, creating their work, and uh, you'll applaud it. If you haven't read their books, they're outside, they're available. If you like the discussion, and even if you don't like the discussion, go ahead and buy it. Enjoy the read. Why? Not because they are young authors who are writing, but because they are good authors who are writing. I read some of the stuff and believe you me, if I could write half as well as they have written when I was their age, I would consider myself really blessed. So, a lot of applause and praise to all three of you. You guys can please pick up your mics and, uh, so that we don't have to start you know, waiting for stuff. Oh, you have to share. I'm sorry. Oh, okay. So, two amongst three, let's be a little friendly towards each other. Okay, so, the first up, uh, let's start with, uh, who's the youngest on the panel? Is it Kahan or Ayan? I think it's me. You're born when? Date of birth? Uh, 
Um, I'm born on 19th Jan 2011. 19th Jan 2011. You're 23rd April. 2008. 2008. And 2009. So we go in that order. Just uh, brief introductions. Uh, and a little bit about uh, your work. So, uh, Kahan, let's begin with you. This uh, discussion or this panel is basically supposed to be about science fiction and uh, the best way to start it, right? Because you got the virus in your brain. Yes. Not in a bad way, he likes to read and write. So I think it was COVID that brought out that uh, story into the public gaze. You want to tell us a little bit about what really inspired you to bring this book out? Um, it wasn't just COVID, it was just something building up over the years. So, um, when I was really young, like maybe one, six months, one year old, um, my parents used to read short, small, sweet books to me every night. So, um, as I grew up, I found that not only do I just like to listen to stories, but I also like to try to attempt to uh, try to read the books and then I found my passion for not just reading but also for writing. So uh, when I was at a younger age, seven or eight years old, I used to write short stories and I think what really brought out this span of creativity in me was um, COVID because not only did I get an ample time for writing but I also felt a spark ignite inside of me. So I guess COVID really brought out all of it in me. And that's where I wrote my book while I saw. Okay, and that's uh, you, I mean, the book begins in Wuhan, which is where uh, the, you know, the scene of crime, if we can call it that, uh, where COVID really sprouted. Uh, yes. So that's, so it brought, you uh, take real life uh, incidents and base stories around those or do you look amongst your friends for character inspiration, relatives? How do you come at that? Um, I try to look around, I try to see different places that interest me that can fit into a plot I've created and then I just try to fit in a character. You know, I mix up qualities, like making soup. It's like making soup, basically. You mix in a few ingredients, you get it, and there you have it, wonderful, hot, steaming soup. Just in way, wonderful, steaming characters, all ready to enter my book. Now I'm hungry. <laughs> no, but, uh, okay. So, uh, that's amazing. We'll come back to you and try and figure out uh, what comes first, the soup or the stone or whatever it is. Uh, Devisha, let's move across to you. You uh, have got something about a magical dream. And uh, so what was it? Do you like jewelry yourself? Or uh, is it just a thought that came to you? Maybe you do you like Tolkien? Or uh, did that feature anywhere in your scheme of things? None of that. The idea just came along as I was writing. So none of it was planned at all. I didn't write any notes or pointers before writing. I just started the introduction of the characters, the place, and it just came along as soon as I started building it up. Okay, so, but why a ring? I mean, what brought that thought into your mind? There has to be a trigger somewhere. Yes, well, I think everyone here has worn a ring. And you know the story is about a magical ring. Well, that really puts the idea that what if my ring is magical into people's minds, and if maybe it was another object that wasn't such a common object, then maybe it would have been as not as relatable. So. Yeah, I suppose the you know magic ring always has that uh, little, to put it boldly, uh, a ring of mystery about it. You don't have people writing about magical spoons or magical salt shakers and things, yeah, exactly. right? And uh, maybe a little bit of uh, bed tent coming in with the creatures that keep popping out. So the inspiration all around you. Okay, great. And uh, the next let's move on to uh, Ayan. And uh, let's hear a little bit about your inspiration. What gave you that little seed to start talking about Maverick because as far as people of my generation are concerned, Maverick 
means Tom Cruise. Yes. yes. Yeah. So, who's your maverick? So, firstly, let's start with my inspiration. Uh, I was like five four. I used to write, like I used to take like four sheets of paper and just start writing stories about competition, magic. A mix of that, but like I would never really show it to my parents. Mm -hmm. Then one day when I was in when I was nine or eight, I got an assignment from my library teacher, my old school, uh, to the assignment was she had given us a variety of choices where we had to pick out and write like a five hundred word story. So then I sat one night and I kept writing it. This is your library teacher. Yeah. It went it went on to, I kept writing for like three hours, it went on to like, I kept writing pages and pages, it never stopped because ideas kept popping and I always maintained a vocabulary book, whichever books I would read, I would find good words, I would write down those words on a sheet of paper, so I would refer to that and like make a whole story. So then after that thing, my mom randomly, she just saw it when I came out sleeping and I remember it was a Wednesday afternoon when I come from school and she really loved my book. And she's like, it's getting published. And the character Maverick, uh, I don't remember, I, I used to watch some show where I got the character of Maverick and I really liked the name. And it, it, his name determines brave, courage, fortitude. And my inspirations over this, my uh, cousin brother, he's, like, he's a teenager, he's added to me. Uh, he had written recently a book before I published mine about finance and so, and he was an author. So. I didn't really read this book, but I was majorly inspired. Can we can go a bit further away because there's like more and more stuff coming out. So it's like a family thing, writing books while you're still a teenager or even before. And writing a book on finance. I think that is something that we haven't yet discussed. And uh, maybe all of you guys need to read what a teenager thinks about finance. Because as you, you know, the money matters become more important in our life, you guys should also know how to handle money and uh, what to do with it. So, sorry, let's get back to your thing of maverick. You know that the term maverick comes from uh, cattle herding. Yeah. So, uh, it's basically a young uh, steer that breaks away from the herd. So, cowboys have to run and go right after it, grab it, lasso it, bring it back. So, any a uh, young steer that has a habit of doing that is called a maverick. Someone who goes away from the herd and you have more or less, uh, I won't say herd because that's derogatory and uh, doesn't sound nice about everyone including me because you guys are almost like outliers. You uh, stand out from the crowd, from the various people because there's very few children who actually like to write a lot and that I think is amazing that you used to write a lot as a child and uh, continue to do so because that's the first step you need to do. A lot of us have ideas, we have thoughts in our minds. You need to put it down on paper and uh, I think all three of you will agree on that, that until you put it out either on paper or on a keyboard somewhere, that output has to be seen. And uh, where's your mom? She hasn't come. Okay, the dad is here. So uh, amazing. I mean, a lot of younger boys find it awkward when their moms go around rifling through their papers, things. God knows what they'll find. But uh, it's amazing that uh, she found a book that she said, "I'm going to get this printed because it's brilliant." Okay, fantastic. So uh, now to just get back to it. Let's uh, come to science fiction because that's what we are going to discuss a little bit now. So amongst the three of you, how much science fiction have you guys read as in classic science fiction, whether it's uh, Frank Miller or uh, A.G. Wells or uh, Jules Verne, the classics? Um, I've read a couple of books of uh, Jules Verne, The Journey to the Center of the Earth and um, Around the World in 80 Days. I think they were very well composed. Um, he writes really well. He just brings out the fiction and the science. So you actually can't tell the difference between the both. And I also read um, uh, The Invisible Man, Ed mm -hmm. Wells. I thought that was pretty well uh, written too. And yeah. 
Amazing. And you guys, do you read science fiction? Um, well, not that much of science fiction, but more like murderous fiction and suspense because I feel like that's more my genre. Okay. And uh, I, I wouldn't explore much in science fiction, but uh, I started reading when I was a kid, so I would read George Orwell. He, his anime farm book talks about um, politics and then uh, Roald Dahl and all the famous writers for young kids. So this idea of science fiction and magic and adventure just came into my mind. I didn't refer it from some place. No, I'm not. I'm not accusing you of <coughs> pulling stuff out from here and there. But uh, yeah, so fantasy fiction would be more your genre, your writing as well as interest, and uh, which is why you've got the aliens landing on Earth and the thing. I'm not going to give away more of the plot, but uh, basically. Uh, let's say that Kahan does not say that the Chinese are bad people who created this virus to destroy the world. Okay, so, uh, but have you seen science fiction movies like Star Wars, Marvel series, in the MCU universe, amongst those who are your favorite characters, let's say? Um, I watched a couple of Marvel movies and DCU movies. Um, I. I think out of all of that science fiction, you know, um, The Flash would be my favorite because it's it's not quite natural. Na that that genre of science fiction is natural. You have it in you before uh, since birth. It's not genetic. It's something a brilliant mind has brought out in the story, and slowly something develops, something good, something just more than human but still somehow human. Something good develops out of that and I think that is why I love the series. It, it was also quite original, if I may say so. The plot was quite original. It's not like all these... Um, uh, it's not like all the stories we read today, fairies, um, fa there are quite a lot of fairies in kids' stories today. It's not a lot like that. It's more of, you know, something developed. I'm not accusing it, uh, accusing other stories that they are bad, they are not suitable, but all I'm saying is it's something original this time. Okay. So that's why I like it. So you like it for its originality and the thought process that creates it. It's very relatable for you. Devisha. Um, I might have to agree with Kahan. Marvel and DC are pretty good and my favorite character has to be from DC it's the Batman because I don't know if you watched it but all of the movies are pretty dark and mysterious so I feel like once you watch them they keep following you you can't stop thinking about them you can't stop thinking about the next movie what will happen next or if the movie is left on a cliffhanger or in you know just like it's stuck in your mind and you can't stop thinking and uh, does the fact that Batman is actually not a superhero come in? He's not, anywhere? but you know, you asked my favorite character. Yeah, no, no, I'm just saying because a lot of people like Batman because he is not a superhero. He has no superpowers. He relies on his intellect, he relies on his wits, he relies on technology to help him get what he does and the instinct, the bravery that's lying within him. So basically, uh, to, for a lot of people, Batman is the ultimate superhero because he has no superpowers. And anyone can actually become like Batman. You, Superman is from Krypton. I mean, wherever that is. He came in, when he came in, incidentally, when Superman started, he could run faster than a locomotive. That was his speed. Then he was able to leap tall buildings in one bound. Now we know that he can fly faster than light. And uh, we know that some aliens have ships that go 14,000 times faster than light, right? I am. Kind of contradictory. I'm more of a Marvel fan. Okay. Uh, uh, like in school, I always loved biology as a subject, and like Spider Man, like, we all know, like, once you think by Spider, he got those powers. And how Spider Man, like, his character is, how they've made him, like, he, he's able to first, like, now it's obviously revealed, but like, before he's to manage his school, he used to be in college and help like, save, save the people using his power. So how he balanced that and how he would hide his true identity of being Spider-Man. So that really oh, shocks me, mesmerizes me. Okay. So Spider-Man, Batman and The Flash, those are the three superheroes you guys really like. 
What about your own characters? Uh, which of your own characters do you identify with most? Mm. If at all. Um, I think... Um, I, I don't think I identify with any of my characters. It's more of a slight mix of my own of my own qualities and then enhanced to a greater level so all my characters are like that some are smart to the 10th power smarter than Einstein some are creative some are fast all like that so I'd say I identify with a good lot of my characters while many of the others are just created from pure nothingness it's it's not something I've observed, it's just something I thought would make life much easier. If you know you, could, you had this power, you had those powers, for example, if I have to climb to the third floor of my hot chocolate room, I'm like, no way, I'm just going to, you know, elongate, hold onto the window sill, shrink to my normal size and climb into the window. Life would be much simpler, wouldn't it? So, um, That's I just... That's a new story coming out, he's working on the problem. <laughs> no, uh, yeah. So I've created yeah. many of my characters like that. Great, so. wonderful. Devisha? Um, I feel like I connect to all my characters because when an author writes a character or builds a character, you put a part of yourself in them, right? Um, the character that I relate to most is the one from this book because she's a teenager, I'm 13. And, you know, I think most of us here are around the same age you know, adolescents and all, I feel like everyone talks about this and it's very overrated to all of you, but you know, I feel like we all relate to this character somehow, even if we don't want to admit it, but still. Okay. Uh, a lot of people think that or feel that uh, an author's first book, it may not be the first book that comes out, like a filmmaker's first film is something that the person really wanted to make. It may not be the first, it may not be the second, but it will always be in the mind, the first film. Similarly, an author's first book is uh, to a great deal drawn on personal experiences and is a lot of times, especially in fiction, the, the result of your own life experiences. What about you? I uh, asked you to be the protagonist of yeah, the story, yeah. mm -hmm. Maverick itself. And I actually said Maverick is someone who like who keeps escaping the hood. So I, uh, in my first story, I don't want to reveal much of the plot, but he tried to uh, do magic, which his dad was a professional at, and he had no idea. So he tried to do it, and how he escapes into some, in some, into some random place, and how he comes back. So it's how he has escaped her hood by trying something new. So his bravery and his camaraderie, like the friendships, the bond he's made with one another character he met who helped him reach back to where he had gone. So like his character, the way I've, I've added some of myself, compassion, um, or benevolence. So all of those make my character like brave, courageous, and yeah, it matches with name Maverick. Okay, great, wonderful. What, uh, that's all the, you know, bravery, benevolence, camaraderie, you like to put yourself into multiple characters. What about the dark side? I'm sure everyone has a dark side. Even kids, youngsters, from the time they're that small, there is always a little hint of, at some point it's naughtiness, at some point it can become really awful. I've seen children who do horrible things. They don't know good from bad or they're just trying out new stuff, but it can be horrible. Do you think of any of the dark sides to your characters? Because in science fiction especially, there's a lot of scope for the dark side. I mean, the whole Sith and the Jedi thing from Star Wars. Do you guys watch Star Wars? No? Few movies. So, you know that Star Wars, there are the Jedi's who are supposed to be the good guys, the protectors, the light side, and there's the Sith, which is the dark side, which is a lot more powerful at times. And uh, that comes through from mythology as well. We had a longish discussion of mythology earlier. But uh, mythology is also about the duality of uh, existence or life or creation. There is life, death. There's uh, good, there's bad. There's evil and there's the bright side, the dark side. So when you write, do you at some point 
imagine the dark side taking over? Uh, yeah, um, so I'm not going to reveal much of the plot here, but there was uh, one of the main characters who at first was, you know, um, the underdog, I'd say. The underdog among his group of friends. So he was the underdog and he didn't let it get to him. He, he, he was considered strange, peculiar, but in the end, he rose up and he managed to help save the whole earth. So I, I'd say yes, at many points of the story, I, I thought what would be like if I just let him go over, you know, you know, transform, what would happen? Would he like become more stronger than ever, you know, all big, big, uh, dark, lord of glory, you know, powerful, ambitious, I'm going to destroy the earth, gonna take it over, whatever, that theme. So, I I always wondered what would happen if I let that happen to him, and I never did. So, he, he kept himself from going over to the dark side, and in the end it paid off. So, yeah, I did wonder many see. times. Abdi Vishal? Um, there are many dark sides in my story beforehand, but I tried to conceal them. Because I feel like, you know, like you said, there's good and evil in everyone. And there's this peace sign, the black and white sign, if you've seen it. There's a black dot in the white thing and a white dot in the black thing. Which it basically... Yeah, duality. Yes, duality. It basically, you know, summarizes that whole thing, the whole good and bad, evil thing. But I feel like, yes, there are a few bad, evil sides you know, to every person behind them, behind their face. I am. So, uh, the, the way my uh, first sequel, the first part of my sequel began was when greed overwhelmed Maverick, the character. Greed and naughtiness, he had to take the risk. So, his inquisitivity led to some negative thoughts of trying to rule the world or get like, in, like a lot of power, become superior. But then, he ended up getting stuck. But uh, the, the risk he took, sometimes that's the dark side, he, he took greed, greed was supreme in him. But that greed turned out making him one of the best magicians, making uh, him make the best of friends, encounter some like evil, the, the, the antagonist in the character, how he overcame the fight between them. Sometimes the greed and the inquisitivity, sometimes it can lead to a successful ending. That's a, it's essentially, what a lot of people call the dark side is a drive that is pushing you to explore new worlds, to break borders, to break boundaries and take yourselves beyond your own limited expectations. It's a way where if you keep pushing, keep pushing, you will, and you don't let it overpower you, you can become greater and greater and greater and there's no limit to what the human mind can achieve. So, uh, first up, thank you guys for uh, exposing your inner thoughts to all of us here. We'll uh, have a few minutes for questions. Anyone has? Do we have questions for the panel? Hi, so uh, you already write science fiction, right? So, while writing science fiction, do you, do you try and take real life things and risk them? Or do you take, do you create more things? You create a new world. I just want to inter, you know, intervene a bit. So, uh, pure science fiction, both Ayan and Devisha's work is more in the genre of fantasy fiction. Uh, Kahan's work is actually more towards science fiction. So, uh, Kahan, would you like to answer that? Yeah, um, it's not, I, I don't try to twist something real to suit my story or to twist something that's not real into my story but it's more of like twisting a combination of both. So there's something real, there's something that's imaginative, there's something that's half true, half not, and it's all twisted together to make my story. So, yeah. Lovely, we have one more question that side. Yes. 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 Yeah. Just coming to you. Good. I 
How do you get the inspiration from your books? Or how do you get the inspiration to write your books? Like, I have tried to write books many times myself, but I do not get the right inspiration to write those books. Okay, uh, is that directed to anyone? No, it's for everyone. No, 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 for, I'm saying, uh, who would you like to address that question to? Or is it open to the panel? Anyone could answer. I would like this, I would ask this question to Kahan. Kahan, okay. Um, I'd say inspiration is not something that is going to come easily. Like, if you want to read a book, it's fine, you can read a book, it's going to be easy. But when you want to write one, you have to find your right time, the right place. You have to set your mood, you have to think of, you have to feel, feel the story, you feel everything. You, feel, you think, what would happen if this happens? If I don't do that, what, what harm is it going to do? What is good? What good is it going to do? Um, you have to feel everything. You over, you don't overlook anything. You have to be a part of the story. And I feel that when you be a part of the story, it's only then when you can actually find that spark, that ignited spark, which helps you write a story. So you just need to find the way to include yourself in the story. Be the story. That way, if you just find the way to do that, you can write a story. Wow. Fantastic. Uh, brilliant answer. There is uh, one more question that side. Yeah. There, ma'am. So, Dishna, ma'am, behind. Hello. Uh, this question is for uh, Devisha, right? Yes. Uh, you earlier mentioned that you like uh, detective books, right? Uh, may I ask which genre means like uh, who do you read most? Well, I read the author Holly Black. Uh, she is great if you like murder mysteries, suspense, basically suspense in general. So I would recommend her. And uh, what will you uh, will you write these types of books in the near future? I hope. Yes, I would love to write these books if anyone would read them. <laughs> Oh, you need to write them and then people then, will read them. I, mean, yeah. I have to drive it. We can, Fantastic. We can uh, one, last one last question. question. There was a young man there who yeah, like, like, put his hand up earlier. Good morning. I had a question that I have tried to make many characters and I have written many qualities in them. But I need to know that how do you increase depth in the character as the characters are right, I think are very shallow in nature. So how do we increase the character depth in our characters? Okay, who would like to answer that? Kahan. Okay, um, so how do you describe yourself? I'm not, uh, I'm not asking you to describe yourself right now, but just think of yourself. Think of your good qualities, your bad qualities, what you like to do, what's your name, characteristics, body, etc. So, you you think of a character as a person the same way as you think of someone. Their likes, their dislikes, how they are, are they rude, are they polite, how, what they want to be, how they are going to turn out. So, you have to think of them like you would think of another person, anyone in the, uh, anyone from the crowd here. So, you, uh, just the way you describe them, you describe your character too and you'll find that your character will have the depth you are looking for. But when we are talking about depth, I am not talking about depth in the sense of that we can't describe the character well enough or something. The character actions or the actions taken by the character sometimes can come out to be meaningless or sometimes can come out to be not along, to, along with the plot which makes the plot go down in quality. So how do you work on that? Uh, you want to answer that? Go ahead. Um, I feel like you should put yourself in the shoes of the character that you're writing. Think that if you were this character, would you do this particular action? And if you would, what would be the consequences of that action? But what if the character is foreign to me? Like, I, we do not have time, okay, but we can take that up with the up after this. Yes. Yeah. But we have one last question. There's a request for a question. So we'll take that and after that we'll shut the session. First of all, congratulations to all three of you for achieving such great success at such small age. 
My question is particularly to Ayan. Uh, fiction books are pretty creative, uh, but they're more of imagination rather than uh, the the hard life and the struggles of hard life. So, what's your opinion on that? So, I would say fiction is it's vast. You can write a lot about fiction because the more you read, the more movies that are coming today. Social media is developing, animation. So, all of this comes down to fiction. So, if you link your book as much as to your life. Every day you'll encounter different events and you can, if you read enough, you'll be able to convert those non-fictional or real life examples into fictional examples like implementing magic, implementing science, implementing uh, dark uh, mysteries. So you can inculcate fiction using non-fiction and I would say that fiction is broader than non-fiction because no, fiction is unlimited. As the uh, topic here today, sky is the limit. Fiction goes beyond the sky. F f fiction is vast. You can like, keep on writing about fiction. I totally agree to your point, but, but just, just one argument to it. Uh, doesn't reading uh, fiction books take us away from reality? Because uh, reading biographies gave us, gives us uh, basically a structural view of, of the successful personalities and, and the various hard times they went through. But uh, just, just raising that question to fiction books. So, how, uh, how can we inculcate? Uh, inculcate I'm not saying you shouldn't read non fiction books. Non fiction books is also what you should be reading. So, if you read both of them, you have a larger variety. And if you have a variety, you can write more. Write on diverse topics, write on more perspectives on the story. Thank you so much. Fantastic. That is exactly what I was going to say. Read fiction, read non fiction, read both. Watch art house films, watch uh, Masala, Hollywood, uh, RRR, Bahubali, whatever you like. Every experience is going to enrich your lives. Think of it in that way and then it's never time wasted. No matter what other people tell you, follow what's inside you. You have to follow your heart at the end of the day. And uh, when you're talking about creating characters, I know you uh, don't be so hard on yourself or your characters. Let it come out. Let that person exist. And you'll find that the character acquires a depth on their own. Let them live. Okay? Let them just take them through paces. Don't start feeling that, oh, this is, this is not as good as Alistair MacLean or this is not as good as Dickens or what would Shakespeare think about this? Don't. Just let your characters live, breathe, and be. And you'll find that they will create the plots themselves in many cases. So, all of you who are interested in writing, first step, I would suggest read. Read as much as you can, it's going to broaden your mind. And secondly, to paraphrase uh, Gandhi and Edison, I know they're very different people, but one said, be the change you want to see in the world. So what Kahan said, be your story, be your character. Be the character you want to see emerging from your books. And second, uh, Edison had said, once remarked that genius is 1% inspiration and 99% perspiration. Writing is very similar. That 1% inspiration might be the spark, but it's 99% of the effort that goes into it. And that is where one really needs to applaud young writers. The drive to keep writing, make drafts. You may not like what comes out the first time. Cancel it, start again. But put in that 99% of perspiration because that is what is finally going to bring that uh, entire effort to light. And that's what you want other people to know what's going on inside your minds at any stage. So, uh, I'm sorry, we're out of time for this, but uh, you please join us after the session is over. If you have any direct queries for any of the authors, I'm sure they'll be more than willing. If you want, you want to pick up their books, the authors are there. We have a signing uh, space for we them. We could do that, yes, but yeah. we're really out of time now. Yeah, done. Please, Thank please, you. Please. Sure. Can Sorry. you please join us at uh, the front of the stage for the photo op? Great. Come on, guys. Show your book now.